Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about this image. This is an image of a wonderful model, Kendra. Um, I shoot her once well, a year or so as she's growing into uh, becoming a more and more professional model and I uh, really enjoy working with her. And um, this time around, I always try to do something different with her. Um, and this time around I decided to play with smoke since I've done kind of a lot of tricks with her before. So I wanted to do something different. Uh, this is shot completely raw. She's not wearing any makeup. The hairstyling is just that's something that she and her mom improvised on the spot. Uh, the smoke. I'm since 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 I work with children a lot. I'm often very concerned with the safety of the kids, and uh, particularly with smoke. Uh, I of course didn't want to use cigarette smoke. Um, that was out of the question. And I um, also did not want to use fog machines because the fog machines usually use the same type of chemical that uh, vape pipes do, which is, uh, it's, it's not water, sorry about that. Um, it's not water um, based, it is actually based on, on propylene glycol. And I'm not 100% um, sold on the safety of propylene glycol. In fact, there are some indications that it might not be safe. So for that reason, I actually don't use fog machines uh, around children. I'm, I'm more lenient using it around adults. I mean, it's been used for, for a long time and you know, as a stage fog and stuff like that. But I know adults is one thing, kids is a, is a different thing. So I do not land propylene glycol around my kids. So this is actually incense. I just you know, figured that incense is going to be more benign than any other type of smoke. It's not smoking right onto her. She can smell it, but she's not actually surrounded by smoke. The smoke is actually closer to uh, the camera than to her. Uh, and I just lit whatever, like, I don't remember, like 10 sticks of, of, of incense, and it's just kind of uh, puffing away there. Now, working with smoke. The, 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 there is one basic trick of working with smoke, and that is if you want smoke to look dramatic, it needs to be backlit. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, so the, the lighting scheme here is that uh, this is a big uh, beauty dish, 28 inch beauty dish, like positioned right over here um, to my right, to model's left. You can see the, the catch light where the, where the beauty dish is positioned. So that uh, lights the model. It lights the, 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 the fog, I mean the, the smoke a little bit, but not really. As you can see that the areas that have, these are the areas of smoke that are lit by the beauty dish. And as you can see, they're a lot more faint and less pronounced than this smoke. This smoke is more pronounced because there is another source of light. It's located over here. It's a hard light uh, and it is <coughs> flagged, meaning it does not actually spill onto the model. So I'm gonna put a big uh, V flat right over here blocking the, the light from spilling onto the model and lighting only the smoke. So that's a, there's a hard uh, strobe position right here, shining onto the smoke and making it look dramatic. Now, if you look at the original image, hold on, here it is. So this is the straight from the camera versus, you can see the, uh, some of the changes that I did. The big changes are, of course, the, the smoke looks more pronounced. I mean, I also fixed this little closing bump because the closing were kind of sticking out from, from there and I didn't want, I mean, it looked a little weird, so I removed that, but really not much is done uh, with Kendra. Kendra really does not need much retouching at all. So most of the work were, were, was with smoke. So what are the ways to make smoke, uh, in this case, for example, more dramatic? The neat thing, of course, uh, that as you can see in the original, the smoke has a bluish hue. The cool thing about blue, as uh, some of you might know, is that blue is, uh, is almost absent in human skin. So working with blue channel is almost, you know, it, it does not almost almost does not affect people unless people um, are lead with bluish uh, light or unless um, they have like blue clothes on, etc. Blue and green, actually, for that matter, and that is one of the reasons why blue and green screens are often used in, in cinematography and, and uh, eliminating um, separating the subject from the background. So it's very easy. To, the blue and green are usually mostly absent from from people's uh, skin. So one of the, the immediate things that one can do is you can go into uh, whatever you're using and just go look look at your blue channel and just bring out the luminous luminosity of of, of the of the blue uh, layer here. So that, that that increases it a little bit. So as you can see, but this is just step number one. Uh, I'll show you basically how I typically do that, and it's actually will show you maybe a slightly different way to do things in in Photoshop. So I'm going to open this up in Photoshop. 
And um, what I'm going to do is one, one of the things that I do quite a bit, and that is just working with color and tonality separately from each other. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the background layer. I'm going to rename it color. Uh, and I'm going to change the, the mode of this new layer to color mode. Uh, not color dodge, where is it? Here it is. So color and, and then the color mode. As you can see right now, I mean, it's a switching off, it does not affect anything. Uh, in fact, for example, what I can do is I can create a new adjustment layer and let's make a black and white layer and we'll just make it a neutral. So just a neutral black and white layer. I can switch on and off the color, but as you can see, generally speaking, the image is almost entirely then, like almost one to one the same. If I just put a black and white copy of it underneath and put the color on top and it looks virtually identical. But you can do different things with the black and white mode. And one of the things you can do is to use blue filter. And if you use blue filter in this case, uh, or high contrast blue even if you really want to do blow things up, but if you do a blue filter, you will know that the smoke suddenly got a lot more pronounced. Uh, with high contrast blue filter, it will be even more pronounced. We're losing, I mean, we're, we're right now, because we're changing tonalities underneath, we're darkening a lot of other tones too, so they become kind of distorted and destroyed. But you can see that the, um, it, there's still a lot more, it, it became much more pronounced in the, in the things. So if I could, so this is new black and white layer, and now it changes things completely. It makes the, the, the blue filter makes smoke really pronounced, but also changes the tonalities of your skin that I didn't want it to change. Specifically, it kind of darkens the saturation. It, it makes the, the darker areas more saturated. So the areas where, uh, like your hair is darker here or along the arm are a lot more saturated. So how to prevent that? Very simple. There is already a built-in mask into this. So I take a low flow black brush. So what that is, is a, uh, low, it's a low flow, so it's only at 4%. Uh, the hardness is at zero, and it is black. So this allows me to mask things away. So now I can work at 4%, but in this case, I want to eliminate quite a bit more. So I'll just go ahead and change it to 20. So I'm going to change it to like, I can just press 2 to do the same. But anyway, so I'm going to start brushing away. The re so basically what I'm doing is as I'm masking away the effect of this black and white layer onto her skin because really I don't want this black and white layer to affect her skin at all. This black and white layer is there to affect the smoke only. I'm not interested in its effect on the skin. So I'm just gonna mask it out. In fact, you can create a different black and white layer uh, you know, that, that would affect this only the skin. Sometimes I, mean, I create uh, some layers to make the skin soft in some areas. And here we are. So and I, then I can just group these two together, and I'm just press control. Hold on, control G, group, and we're gonna call it smoke enhance. And here we are. And once again, if I see some some other areas that are still affected, I can I can change it more. But here we go. Here is the kind of do the before and after. And if I was to save this, you'll see that, uh, I mean, of course, I mean, for my version that I did a lot more to it, but here you go. So this is my final version, but you can see that this is the, the now the smoke is pretty pronounced, just like in my version. Of course, I obviously toned this image and unsaturated it and yada, yada, yada. Uh, but nonetheless, here's the before and after. The smoke is significantly more pronounced. If you want to play with it more, uh, the other thing that will affect it is you can go to this, this brush and you can um, go to clarity and jack up the clarity here and just brush it in in a few places where you want. The clarity will also bring it out here. You need to be careful. Clarity brings out uh, this transition, but it also really neg usually negative affects the skin because it basically makes the skin very, uh, brings out all the imperfections. So here we go. So here's where we added a few more uh, details to the smoke. So that's how to make, uh, that's, that was too much, undo. Anyway, so here we are. So this is how we're working with uh, smoke. This is before and after to bring, uh, bring it out. So it's backlit, number one, you would barely see it if it wasn't. And, uh, and then you bring it out in Photoshop or in, in Lightroom, there are different, different uh, options available to you. Anyways, hope you find it helpful. Feel free to always um, ask questions uh, below or email me your questions. And uh, I hope to talk to you again soon.
Thank you.